The last leg of an epic trip often ends up being the most challenging. Painting ourselves into a small corner there. Mr. Straight and Cirrus, I don't think it's such a great idea. See, he turned in front of me, yeah, I'll slow down. And it seems to frequently happen when you're most tired. Jason and I were on our way back to California from the Air Venture Air Show in Wisconsin. It had flown to Sioux City, Iowa, Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, and Wendover, Utah. We had a feeling the last leg to California would be the most challenging based on the weather ahead, so we took a little break at the Wendover Airport. We made it to Wendover, Utah. This place is pretty cool. It's an interesting site since it used to be the training base for the World War II era B-17 and B-24 bomber crews. It was where they trained the B-29 unit that carried out the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They've got a cool museum at the airport with lots of original artifacts and equipment from that time. It says they used carrier pigeons to send messages back to headquarters. So they would like put literal actual pigeons in here? Yeah, like and birds. Then the pigeons are trained to fly home, so all they have to do is write a note and attach it to the foot of the pigeon and let it go. And the pigeon flies home. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Now we just text message. <laughs> I, th I want to bring back the carrier pigeon. The airplane's getting fueled up and we made our way over to this casino to try to find a Starbucks. It's the only thing out here. There's two blackjack tables open. You gotta love crew cars. Check out this steering wheel. <laughs> it's upside down. You never know what you're gonna get. We got our Starbucks at that casino. Back here at the airport, the plane is fueled up. Just gotta deal with a little bit of weather on the way. Hopefully dodge some uh, little storms and stuff. What do you think, Chase? I think we're gonna make it or we wouldn't be going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coming up. We've got 200 feet, 100 knots, positive rear climb flaps coming up. Yep, oh, here's up flaps up over here. Well, we looked at the weather and we are seeing here on the iPad, we're seeing some scattered precipitation. Um, not a lot of lightning strikes, but some that we saw, especially on the ground with the internet weather and um, you know like the light green and dark green so we're just kind of kind of pick our way around the stuff visually yeah i'm pretty i'm pretty tired i mean i'm tired enough that if we weren't doing this as two pilots there's no way i would do this last leg yeah we tried to like take all the pressure off and say i don't have to get back jason doesn't have to get back i had to change my flight from reno because we're not going to make it there my flight was at like five o'clock so i rebooked from sacramento I actually ended up being cheap so that's cool. Thank you, Southwest. Yeah. And hopefully we'll make it there and I'll, I'll catch it. But if not, no worries. We're on course now. What do you show up here at 11 o'clock? Is that a cell? Yes, 11 o'clock is a cell. A little bit yellow there, so that's a big it's, a, one. it's a little bit better to the right. And, you know, we are, This is there is like a convective segment here. So we're looking at that and just looking at the intensity of all that stuff. Yeah, dude, it's, uh, we're going to have to get well in front of that other one. We're going to have to like, go that way for a while, or behind it, but it's it's right there. I think in front of it is a better idea based on this tactically, like here. All right. We're behind gonna... it, because south of it is all this stuff, so I don't think we should go through there. That's strong. If we go up here, okay, this. just keep an eye on the time, just in terms of like total flight time, but I think we're pretty good on fuel, right? Yeah. Um, one of the things that... I wouldn't be doing right now is flying IFR. So you're talking about flying through a convective sigma. I mean, it's one thing yeah. if the cells are, are scattered wide enough and we're visual, like we have ground contact and we can see the rain and see where they are and we can make sure we're staying at least 25 miles away. That's is one that thing. like a rule of thumb of yours? Like if it's convective, no IFR necessarily. Yeah, I wouldn't be flying IFR in a convective sigma in a light airplane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can try that and ATC can help you pick through the weather and you can plan on this, but I've read you know, so many accident reports where people get into big trouble doing that stuff. Yeah. That's kind of like, I flew to Albuquerque and I made a video about it and there was precipitation, it was IFR, and so like I'm seeing this stuff but I'm not seeing lightning, no. and there's no convective segment, right. so those are the things that I'm looking for when I'm flying through precipitation in the clouds, like is it convective, is there lightning, how, how like heavy is the precipitation, like and of course icing, but. You know, the thing that is tricky is that, um, you know, when does, a, when does a moderate rain shower become a thunderstorm? And how do you know at what's, what stage of transition it's in? So I sort of 
you know, I concur with what you said, but I really balance that against what kind of atmosphere, what kind of potential exists in the atmosphere. So in a convective sigma, you wouldn't fly through really any kind of rain shower, because at any moment, that rain shower could become a thunderstorm. Right. right? But That's if you're right. flying through high pressure, and you're fairly confident that it's not going to develop into a storm, flying through a rain shower might, might not be a big deal. All right, here we are at our cruising altitude of 10,500 feet. Yeah, so it, it looks not so good there, but over here, it's better. Right, and you see what I was saying about Nevada. The thing that makes it challenging is, like, the airport in the valley at 5,000 feet is reporting 7,000 foot overcast, which right. is AGL, but then there are these 12,000 foot peaks every yeah. valley, right? So, like, that one over there and that one over there, like, it. It's pretty easy in Nevada to get pinched between the clouds and the mountains because all the airports that are reporting weather are down in the valley. Right. So you have to kind of do the math. Wow, this is like gorgeous right here. I know, it's glacier valley after glacier valley after glacier valley, that's all it is. Yeah, now that's at our three o'clock, the really strong stuff. Are you gonna try to like hug this trailing edge of this guy? Um, yeah, I'm gonna try to cross the path right now while we have an opening, if yeah. I can. And if it looks like we're not going to make that, then I'll turn back to the north. Yeah, I could probably go to Elko, although Elko will get covered probably by this big one at some point, you know. Yep, you know, we're going 170 and it's going 25. Yeah. I'm just going to try to beat it. Totally. Yeah, I know the winds are light. That's something else I noticed, by the way, that factored into the decision making. Well, had we seen like screaming winds through here with the convective activity, it probably would have been a no-go. Are there airports north of us from here? What's north of us if we had to divert and run from it? Nothing, huh? Nothing here, just Elko. I mean, if all that thickened up and the only way was to turn and run, like turn right and run from it, how far would we have to go before we can land somewhere? Just painted ourselves into a small corner there. So that's Elko there? Yep. All right, cool. Next stop, Battle Mountain. Where's that one? It's 12 o'clock. I think I see it. So the clearest way to go is this way, like between the thing straight ahead, right? Between this straight ahead. Yeah, except that we're not going to be at that thing straight ahead for another, like that thing will be up here. It'll be up here, yeah, so yeah. maybe it's a clear shot to right. battle mount. Yeah, that's what I'm going to count on. We still have Interstate 80 below us. We do. Okay, good. Yeah, man, it's dodgy today. So we're just coming up on this little line of uh, green. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm getting a little closer to see uh, what it really is. Maybe down that way. I'm going to keep going straight for a minute. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I know we're going to fly through a little rain, but I don't know. Can I see that one more time? Yeah, I'm still going to go direct Battle Mountain. Okay. I mean, any way you slice it, we're flying through. Like, we're not going to find that little hole that might not exist anymore. Plus, I like the terrain this way. Like, I, I can see where I'm going. I think this is sort of a dissipating little rain. And behind us is, by the way, is, is good to Elko. Just okay. With you, yeah. It's these moments in flying that I really love. We're presented with new and unique challenges that have no clear singular answer. We've analyzed the situation using all available resources, considered many possible outcomes, and made our best plan. We've got multiple outs in case things go sideways. Then, the moment of truth arrives. Will things go as we expect? And if they don't, how will we handle it? I love this feeling of nervous anticipation when I'm armed with lots of situational information and alternate plans. Are you just looking at that little ridge that we can see pretty clearly? Yes. And I'm also fairly confident that we're going to pop out of this rain before we get to that terrain, but yes. And also, to the right, it looks really good. So if you lose this right, you go to the right. Yeah, I think we're just, I'm, we're sucking it up here. We're going to get rained on for a minute. And, uh, but I think we're going to pop out the other side and then we'll see the back side of everything sort of open up. I did slow down to maneuvering speed, though, just in case through this rain we get our asses kicked. That's a good call. <laughs> and it's actually very smooth under here so far. Yeah, so far so good. Before we get rained on, if you're enjoying this content, the best way to support this channel is to join our Patreon community. As a Flying Monkey member, you'll get access to exclusive ongoing video series like our Multi-View Instrument Approach series, Airplane Maintenance series, CFI Debriefs with Jason Miller, Aviation Content Creation Tutorials, and our How to Fly to Mexico webinar and detailed guide. Best of all, you'll become part of our amazing community of aviators with our own Discord chat, meetups, and flying trips. We've even had Flying Monkey members partner in on a plane together. So come join us. Oh, there's the heavy stuff. This is the return that you are seeing. We're under it. Yep, we're right under it now. Give it about another 20 seconds. 
Even in a tense situation, I still try to enjoy the peaceful beauty of the moment, and this flight through some rain was no exception. We made it through that bit of weather, and the possibility of making it all the way home was starting to look good. November 731 Hotel Romeo, contact Markel, approach 119.2. 119.2, good night, thanks. Uh, 731 Hotel Romeo. Um, it's Markel, man. Here we are. Yeah, hey, isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. You, and I like going on the long trips, too, when you get to a place that's like so far and like the first time I talked to Albuquerque Center, I'm like, I'm so far from home. <laughs> I know. Well, it was funny when we flew out, I, it made all my kids listen when Chicago Center said, welcome Chicago Center. You know, I was yeah. like, we're there kids, right? That's awesome. Now I'm home. We've got like what, 40, 35 minutes to go yeah. from this entire journey, man. We're bringing it home and the weather looks pretty good ahead, right? It does. Wow. So this is so cool because we're like coming in over the Sierras and all of a sudden the terrain is like, boom, it's hot. With just less than an hour to go on our epic trip, we enjoyed some amazing views. Wow. But had one more challenge to face during landing. Well, we got a ways to come down here. I think I'm gonna start my descent. Okay. We'll start cooling her down a little bit. McClellan Traffic, Centurion 731 Hotel Romeo is approximately seven miles to the northeast. Uh, we'll be crossing midfield at pattern altitude for left traffic, runway 34 McClellan. I got two wheels, you have two wheels? Yep, got All two right. wheels. We got pattern altitude, we got the airport in sight. Going traffic, sir. No five miles to the southeast, inbound from three, four, straight in traffic for many. McClellan? Oh, Mr. Straight in Cirrus, I don't think it's such a great idea. Nah, he's probably not gonna do that. All right, below uh, 160 flaps, we'll go 10. Flaps are 10 here. Five mile final, three, four. Over the five mile. Uh, straight in traffic from McClellan. I'm not sure how this is going to work out. 7 3 on Hotel Romeo's left downwind, runway 3 4. McClellan. Traffic. 3 mile final, 3 4. McClellan. Come on, buddy. Yeah, he's, he's like coming screaming. Man. McClellan traffic is in train. 7 3 1 Hotel Romeo's left base, 3 4. McClellan. Traffic here. No short final, looking for traffic. Got him off your right? Yeah, I see him. Behind us. Uh, McClellan Traffic, Centurion 731 Hotel Romeo, a short final 3 4. McClellan Traffic, see, turn in front of me, I'll slow down. Okay, let's talk about the situation. We're arriving at a non towered airport from opposite the traffic pattern side. The FAA recommends crossing midfield and entering the traffic pattern in one of two ways. One is at pattern altitude plus 500 feet, then two miles clear of the downwind descend to pattern altitude, and enter 45 to the downwind, yielding the traffic already in the pattern. The second is cross midfield at pattern altitude and turn 45 degrees into the downwind, yielding to other traffic in the pattern. This one works best when there are no other planes in the pattern. The FAA encourages using the standard traffic pattern when arriving or departing. It suggests pilots on a VFR straight and approach maneuver to land so as not to disrupt the flow of other aircraft. The recent fatal mid-air collision at Watsonville is a good example of why straight in VFR approaches are a bad idea. Expecting everyone to get out of your way or alter their standard traffic pattern is contrary to the FAA guidance on traffic pattern flow. It also puts the pilots flying at pattern altitude in greater risk since extending downwind usually means flying out of gliding range of the runway. In our case, while we did have the straight in airplane in sight, and although we technically did have the right of way, turning base in front of the straight in aircraft may have increased the risk. What do you think about VFR straight in approaches at non-towered airports? Comment in the YouTube comments. All right, we landed wow. in Sacramento, wow. dude. That was a, that was an awesome, epic time. It really was. Thank you for having me on that uh, trip. And oh man, it was a pleasure. Osh was awesome. Amazing. Thanks for coming out last minute and uh, being my companion there. And yeah. Fun. Thank you. It was awesome, and thank y'all for joining us. Yeah. It was really fun. See you guys in the next video. Yep. See ya. It's off to Sacramento Airport to catch a flight to Burbank. Thanks for coming along on the journey with us.